So here's what's up. Um, you, you, got, you have to have a partner. And so no, no menage a trois three ways. Okay, and no solos. We're, no one's going solo today. I know you might go solo tonight, but not today. <laughs> All right. So uh, <laughs> most of you will be going solo tonight, actually, but that's just how life is, man. You know, people are so much less likely to partner up in college than we imagine it. And the data that we have about how much sex people have in college is that people aren't really having that much sex, I'm afraid. They're really not. So those of you who really mostly enjoy it with yourselves, you're not missing out, really. That's how, that's how it is with most other people. So that's just the reality. I'm just talking from the data. So you can talk, think about your friends, but, you know, whatever it is, right? Okay, uh, in any case, you got to have a partner. So it's, you have to. It's going to get really, really awkward, and then it's going to get annoying, and you're going to be super embarrassed in front of the whole class if you don't have a partner. So who does not have a partner? Because we can get you one right now. Yo, can you? You're, there's no space there, so you got to stand up and come out in the aisle. Who, do, who else doesn't have a partner? Yo, dude, right there. Go over to that dude right there. Right there. He's your, you raise your hand, bro. Stand up. See that guy? Who else doesn't have a partner? See how easy that was? Who else doesn't have, dude, do you not have a partner? No, dude, dude listen. No, here's, I'm counting. One of you dudes, two, four, six. Okay, dude, you don't have a partner. Oh, you, who lives together? These two right here? No, who, bro, who doesn't live together? All right, dude, you got to stand up. We got to get you a partner. Someone get this dude a partner. Go to the top. They'll get you somebody. <laughs> who doesn't have a partner? I got a guy right here. Who, do, who doesn't have a partner? Seriously, raise your hand. In the front. In the front row. Dude, front row? Bro, down in the front row. See how easy that is? Who else? <laughs> who else? Who are we rocking with? Who needs a partner? Because it's going to happen. You're going to... Who needs a partner? We golden? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to call somebody out. It's going to get so embarrassing. Anybody? Wait, who else? Bro, you need a partner? Oh, yeah, you don't have a partner. Yo, we need someone for the guy in the front row, man. All right, yeah. Can you come down? Yo, yo, yo. Bro, can you just move over here? Bro, you move over here. Yo, front row over on this side. The this guy with the blue baseball hat is your partner. Who else? Anyone else? Um, those of you at the top who are, you, can, you also are going to partner up, but wait until see if somebody else comes in. Yo, you're front row over here. Got it? With that dude. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say a few things, and then we're going to have an, have, do an exercise. Uh, and then we're going to do a couple things. Today is it's just a, a much more kind of uh, open class. Tomorrow, by contrast, um, oh yeah, Tuesday, is the infamous needy penis lecture. So, as you might imagine, since I still have a job, uh, I did not title that, nor... In my do I do it by myself? So it's my wife's ideas. It's her title. It's her lecture. Her talk, really. Her. her um, but she's come, she'll come to class on Tuesday, and we'll do it together. And um, but it's it's a it's a class on gender dynamics, and fits really well into kind of much of the stuff that we're talking about in the present age. Um, if you do uh, have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if you're straight, by, by, by the way, it's really directed towards straight people, so it's just how it is. So um, if you do have a partner um, and you're straight, you might want have them at least watch the live stream. If they're here, they can come to class, but have them at least watch the live stream. It'll be very informative, actually. We're going to give a lot of tips. Uh, <laughs> actually... <laughs> But just Not the really. tip. What's that? <laughs> Wait, what was that? Just, just, yeah, that's right. Just that. <laughs> so on Tuesday, you're going to go out and vote and oh, then yeah. come to Social 19, right? 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just like Daffy. So here's, um, again, team, team at the top, just wait. More people will come in late, and there's space over here and down in the front, okay? And then you all can partner up. Hey, so I want to just say a couple things um, to kind of to get us going. Um, you know, la- la- the last couple of classes were kind of, even even for my liking, were, were a little deep or a little uh, just dark in some ways. And I, I have this idea that um, that you know we need some of that, and then we need to to to, to go light because that's the nature of life. That you you know you can even in the darkest of times, you, la- laughter is really important. It keeps us balanced, keeps us sane, and it's really important. I mean, if you can't laugh at something, then what's the purpose of being alive, right? I mean, even in the most difficult of times, we see that. So, uh, so we will. So, I, just be. So, we're just going to be a little bit lighter today, kind of. Um, but I, I want to say something else. One of the things that I've been getting at in the past couple of classes is. Um, people surrounding themselves with other people who are like them. And the, 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 the really potentially dangerous implications of doing that. And, and how it's really important to get outside of our comfort zones and to you know, understand the world in some different ways by understanding other people in different ways. Because um, human beings, I think, I, I don't know, like I'm making a conjecture here, but you know, in speaking, I was speaking with a Melina, a friend of mine who works with the when they uh, the um, um, coordinates the social, the discussion groups, helps coordinate the discussion groups, and she was talking about her work and studies in biological anthropology and saying, you know, there's a way in which so many people think, and and I think that's the way in which we're programmed to connect with people who are like us, and in some ways it's kind of a survival thing, I suppose, but also. It can also be just kind of a laziness thing, right? You're just sort of, pro, you know, life can be a little bit mysterious and a little bit dangerous. And I don't know, like, there's just a way in which it's just easier to be around the things that we know. And the things that are the other, you know, those kinds of other people, the, the strangers, um, we could just, it's pretty easy to put walls up to them and just hold those walls. And then all we have to do is learn a little bit, just tiny little you know, inklings of, of like teachings by people about how other people are dangerous or something negative about other people. So, you know, like since the last class, I, I was, someone asked me what I had learned about Jewish people growing up. And I, I don't ever remember very many really overt statements at all. It's just the subtle things that get kind of dropped in my psyche or... You know, nothing about, like, today what we hear about Muslims. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just the subtle stuff. And the subtle stuff creates that kind of wall. And, and it really, it's incumbent upon us, I think, first off, if we want to just be thoughtful beings in the world, we have to work against our natures and again our sociological nature and our probably our biological nature to, you know, reach out across to the other people to understand that other person, who they are and what they are and what they're all about. And learn for ourselves that what there is to know about other people in other groups. And sometimes it's just, it's the subtle thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's like you got to get past the awkwardness. Just like y'all, I sit you down today and I say, hey, you know, you're, so we just partnered you up randomly, and most of you are partnering with people that you don't know, and but you're many of you are not even talking to each other, you're like because it's it's weird, it's awkward. You're sort of like you know you're in your own space. I'm like, why aren't you talking to each other? Come on, man, just engage. It's not, but yet there's this way in which we just hold these kind of walls up. There's just the, the awkwardness of something, you know. Well, the awkwardness goes on and on and on 
And it's also implicated in lots of really negative things that happen in the world in really big ways, like things like genocide and mass killing and kind of some of the stuff that I've been talking about. That's all, the, the fuel of that is really deep. It's deep from people not engaging. So what I want to do is um, just have some stuff today. I want to try to break, break that down a little, okay? And see where we can go. Cool? All right. And we're going to start right here with getting, getting you all getting to know each other a little better than you currently do. So once again, who doesn't... So you're going to put all your stuff away. So you're going to, we're all going to be standing up in a, in a minute. So you can put your stuff away. Yo, and... While we're doing the exercise, you won't be able to sign the attendance sheet, but you pick it up right away and make sure when we're done with the exercise, you sign it. And you all need to know something, just a tiny little hint coming from Lauren and Kristen and myself. You know, when you sign other people in, we have a master attendance sheet and we check signatures. And when you sign other people in, they don't get credit. And sometimes we see people signing other people in. I mean, like... Jesus, like people sit right underneath Lauren and Kristen and they like sign somebody in. Like, come on, man. That's like cheating on a quiz. You understand, bro, right? It's the same thing. So you're not getting credit. If you're, whoever that is you sign in is not getting credit and nor would you get credit if we knew who you were, but we don't. So don't sign people in. It's not cool. Okay, anyone need a partner? Seriously? Okay, one of you can just partner with her, okay, at the top, because you all are going to do this too. Anybody else? Because we have one person who needs a partner. Anyone? Seriously? Are there any, you know who your partner is? Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay, man. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Um, just whoever's got the attendance sheets, just hold on to them and everybody stand up. Don't, if you have drinks and stuff, don't spill it. And, and face your partner. Okay, so here it is. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. We're going to do this. We don't want to take too long as we do this. So, okay. Hang on. You're facing your, cl you're facing your partners. Who right now, we still have one person who doesn't, who does not have a partner right now? Because it's really awkward. There are no three ways. Who doesn't have a partner? Raise your hand. We have one? Wait, can you go to the, can you send someone down from the, who is it, bro? Oh, that's my fault. I didn't get her a partner. I was supposed to. All right. Can you, okay, you have a partner now. Who else? Who doesn't have a partner? We golden? Yo, they can be right in this row right here. Anybody? We good? All right, man. Okay, so here's what you want to do. Put your hands by your side. And you want to get relaxed, so just kind of shake it out a little bit, get relaxed. Um, we are, so close your eyes, yo, close your eyes. Yo, hang on, hands by your side, close your eyes. Face your partner, close your eyes, don't talk. Okay, now here's the deal, phone's away, close your eyes. Face your partners. Don't talk. So here's what's going to happen. Yo, some of you are looking around. Close your eyes. It's not awkward if you close your eyes. Got it? So here's where we're going to be, my friends. You're going to do an exercise. And a lot of times, a lot of times when... just it's okay it's okay okay the exercise so hands at your sides do you really face your partner some people are turned away don't turn away just 
don't laugh. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to say go, and what you're going to do is you're going to just open your eyes, but you're not going to look into your partner's eyes. Okay? Cool? Got it? Here we go. We're going to do it for three seconds. Ready? And you're not going to talk. Ready? Go. Okay, close your eyes. Now, here's the deal. No, that doesn't mean you look in another direction. So we're going to do it again. Close your eyes. Hands at your side. <laughs> nod in your pockets. <laughs> hands at your sides. Nod in your pockets. Okay, we're going to do it again. Now, when I say open your eyes, you're going to look at your, just at your partner's forehead. Like their hairline. Okay? Don't look in their eyes. Okay, Ready? Hands at your sides, close your eyes. Ready? Hands at your side, close your eyes. Ready? We're going to do it for three seconds. Okay? Go. All right, dudes. Yo, that... All right, close your eyes again. Close your eyes. Damn, dog. All right, hold on. Yo, that, that was an absolute disaster. So we're going to do it again. You're going to... Here we go. Close, hands at your side. Don't, don't fold them, nothing. Just right at your side. Ready? We're going to do it again. I'm going to close your eyes. I'm going to count to three. You're going to look at your partner's forehead. Ready, set, three. Go. Three seconds. Okay, stop. Do it again. Hang on, stop. Hands at your side. Here we go. Do it again. Yo, we haven't even started. This is just practice. So, ready? Hands at your side. Here we go. Quiet, quiet. Hands at your side. Close your eyes. Looking toward your partner. Do not look away. Eyes closed. I'm going to say go. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at your partner's forehead for five seconds. And no one's going to laugh. And no one's going to say anything. Ready, set, go. Okay, close your eyes again. Okay, good. That was good. Okay, here we go. We're going to do it again. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hands at your side. Men, those of you men who are paired up, don't be getting all homophobic and stuff. It doesn't mean you're gay. Dude, bro, you don't, do you not? Dude, come here, man. Trying to get out. Dude, go to the top. Go to the top. How, do you think you're uncomfortable? That mf -er was just standing there by himself. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm just going to look at myself. Can someone make sure he gets a partner at the top, my team? Kristen, someone, you can do it. You can do it with him. All right, ready? Close your eyes, hands at your side. We're going to do it again. Here we go. We're going to look at your partner's forehead, and we're going to do it for 10 seconds this time, and no one's going to laugh. You ready? Set. Go. Okay, good. Close your eyes again. <laughs> All right, ma'am. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're going to do it now. Now this is the real deal. Listen, for the, I've, I've noticing that a few people are really, are really uncomfortable and they're expressing their discomfort by laughing. Can whoever those people are, can their partner please reassure them that it's okay? Really, you don't need to laugh. And, and men, once again, yo, bro, dude, do you not have a partner? Dude, go to the top and get a partner, dude. What the fuck? Man, does anyone else need a partner? God. All right. Here we go. Hands at your side. Let's go. Ready? So, okay. Hands at your side. Close your eyes. Face your partner 100% directly in front of your partners. We're going to open your eyes, and what you're going to do is we're going to go. 
15 seconds of you just very calmly, don't laugh, don't, it's okay. You're going to look into the eyes of your partner. If you have a hat on, make sure your hat is pulled back so they can see your eyes. Men who are doing it together, gentlemen, like you guys, you're not going to be gay. You're good, okay? You might be gay, but it won't be because of this. Okay, here we go. Ready? Close your eyes, hands at your sides. Ready? You're going to look into your eyes of your partner. When I say go, we're going to do it for 20 seconds, and nobody is going to laugh. It's 20. Ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes, everybody. Set. Go. Quiet, 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 quiet. Don't move. Don't move. Okay, hang on. Close your eyes again real fast. Don't laugh. Don't, no, no noise. No noise. Hang on. Do it again. Ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yo, here we go. Here we go. Ready? One more time. One more time. Here we go. Hands at your side. Face your partner. Exactly. Face your partner. Here we go. Ready? Set. Ready? Set. Set, go. Just really quiet. Shh, really quiet. We're just entering into that realm of the other. Shh, quiet. It's all good. Just break the barrier, man. It's the same. Shh, quiet, quiet, quiet. Shh, quiet. Okay, so now close your eyes again. We're going to do one more. And here's what I want you to say. Ready? Close your eyes. <laughs> Hands at your side. I'm going to just break it down one more. Ready? And here's what I want you to do. Close your eyes. Hands at your side. We're going to go. No talking, no laughing. You did a nice job that time. Now we're going to really go for it. So here's where we're at. One of the, it's really can be difficult looking into the eyes of another person because it's just the thing, A, we don't do, and B, it just takes us somewhere into a different world. And we want to get into those worlds. That's what this class is about. So close your eyes. Don't look at me. Face your partners. Don't cross your arms. Hands at your side. Ready? Nice. Okay, good. <laughs> Dude. And, yeah. That was impressive, right? <laughs> All right. Have a seat. Um, okay, so here's what's up. If you're at the top, yo, everyone, everyone in the room now at this point needs a partner. So if you're at the top, just you can, there are seats down in the front. Just whoever you're partnering up with, just come down into the front. There are a couple seats here, a couple seats here, some seats here in the fourth row, okay? So everyone just grab your book bags and come grab a seat. Okay, and get the attendance sheets going again. Okay, cool? Um, so here's what I'd like you to do. Yo, there's a bunch of seats up yeah, here, the fourth row. There's a whole bunch of seats in the fourth row over here. We're all good. All right, man. So here's what I'd like to do. Hey, that was nice, by the way. You did a, you did a decent job. So what I'd like you to do with your partner is relate an uplifting experience that you've had. And maybe you don't have one, but your partner does, okay? 
So maybe, maybe both of you don't have this experience, but an uplifting experience that you've had with someone or some group of a different ancestry, race, culture, or nationality, including nation, okay? So you're going to have some experience, something that has happened to you that you've observed, that something that's just like really just jumps out. Okay, good? We ready? With your partner. Presumably you all know each other's names by now. All right, go. All right, okay, here we go. Um, next thing. All right. All right, next one. Um, are we ready? Did you get some good stories? You got some stories? Someone have a story? All right, man, here's this one. What question do you have for someone of a different ancestry, race, culture, nationality, and then identify the group? Like a question, like a really good, like it, it would be really nice, would be a question that would be, that you typically wouldn't ask. Just something you really would like to know of a particular group. You just want to know. What's a question that you have? You just want to know. Think about it. You got nations of the world. You got nationalities. You have races. You have ethnicities. You have cultures. You got all sorts of opportunities. All right, go ahead.
it must be kind of boring for people on the live stream. Yeah, tell them sorry, man. Tell them they can ask each other questions. All right. You got one? You got something? You got something? Uh, I'm gonna ask you out. I'm gonna call you out on it. All right, here we go. Yo, next one. All right. Yo, last. All right, here we go. Last question. Last question. Then we're gonna have a conversation. What's something that you wish people of a particular? And again, you really gotta identify the group: race, ethnicity. Ancestry, nationality, nation, whatever, understood about you, your group, whatever, however you identify as your group. What's something you wish people would understand about your group? And you got to identify the group the, who you want to understand something and then you. So think about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you're, which, yeah, no, yeah, you, you're gonna just say your answer to your partner, and your partner will say their answer to you. Jeff can run green, by the way. All right, y'all. Okay, let's go. Um, so here's what we need. We, I need someone to relate th one, a story that your partner related to you about an uplifting story. So who's got a story that their partner told? They're, they're like, oh, yeah, that's actually a pretty cool story. I want to say it to the class. And 
Is it? Who was it? Yeah, who else? Who's, who's on deck? I have another microphone. Who else? Who's, got, who's the next person that's going to go? Well, hang on. You go. All right, dude. Go ahead. Wait, can uh, you stand up, though? And camera, pick her, someone pick her up. Don't pick me up. Go ahead. I can talk? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my partner told me that she's Jewish, and after what happened in Pittsburgh last weekend, a lot of her friends that aren't Jewish were, like, texting her and saying that, like, they hope she's okay and she, they feel sorry about what happened. So, so lots of people reached out? Yeah, like from other religions cool. and races. All right, very cool. Cool, man. Next person. Who else? Who wants to go? Who's got a story? Come on, man. Hey, bro, can you do me a favor? Can you just take carry that microphone around? Take it down to them right there. Can you, you can stand up too then camera Yeah. Turn that turn toward that camera right there. No, behind you, right there. No, right there, behind you. Yep, right there. All right. No no no. All right, down. Yep, that's good. Um my partner's saying how he had a teammate that um was from Senegal and Africa and that they were every time after lunch like he would get really pissed off. And one day he asked why, and it was because, like, we waste so much food here, and that back home, like, he literally maybe had two meals a day, and I just thought that was interesting. Cool. So, yeah. Yo, cool. Next one. Who else has got a story? Bro, you're going to have to... Yo, bro, you got to go... Gra- bro, yo, gummy bear, dude. You're the camera... <laughs> you're the microphone guy now. Who else has got a story? Yeah, stand up. Look right into that camera, too. Okay. Um, so my partner went to Israel when he was 18, and then he got a chance to hang out with um, uh, several friends like from Israel, and they are... Um, they were the same as his age, but they were all in the army. So, um, like, after um, they graduate from high school, both men and women need to go to the military for, like, two or three years. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's it. Cool. cool. All right, thanks, man. Cool. Who else? <laughs> Who's got a story? Who's got something they want to share from their partner? Who else has something? Dude, uplifting story, something uplifting. Doesn't have to be like obviously groundbreaking. Who's got something? Any who's got it? Who wants to do it? Dude, do you have nothing? Dude, then yeah, if I hadn't asked you, you wouldn't say anything. Alright, no, you don't. Go ahead. Wait, this is her story? Dude, did he tell you the story? Then you got to tell the story, dog. Oh <laughs> That's how this game works. You can look right into that camera, too. Okay. So basic- What's your name first? Taryn. Taryn? Mm-hmm. That's right. I knew that. Yeah. All right. So basically, he was just saying how he's met a lot of, like, Muslim people and, like, Arabic people, and, like, they're always uplifting to him, asking them, like, how he's doing, how his day been, um, and things like that, because we get this perception that Muslim people are so, like, all, they're all terrorists and this, that, and the third, but they were actually really nice to him. And actually, we're really caring. Cool. So, so, dude, Arab Muslims really caring and nice. Cool. Very cool. Who else? Does she have a cool story, bro? It, it was funny. It's funny? All right. You tell it, man. Go for so, it. Uh, she you told can me, look right into that. Camp. She told me how she ordered Domino's. And <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, she went to go open the door. And it was, like, a really old white man. And apparently, he was, like, he was, like, the nicest guy ever. And she, they were like, why are you knocking on the door so loud? And he's like, oh, because, like, you know, college houses, like, there's so many people uh, listening to music. They can barely open the door. You got to, like, blow up their phone so, like, they come open the door and stuff. Yeah. 
All right, cool. So nicest dude ever. Nicest old white guy. Like as old as me? No? No? (laughs) All right, who else, man? Who else? Who else has a story? Come on, man. Dude, do you have a story? Bro. Bro. Did you get a story? Did you get a story? Yo, bro, did you get a story from her? Come on, man. Got one over here. All right, man. <laughs> um, so Krista said that she spent... So two years ago, she went to Haiti, and she was telling how, like, these kids had to, like, walk up a hill for, like, two, three miles to get water. And it was eye-opening because... Like, we don't have to do anything. It's just right there. So. Yeah, cool. Which is, kind of, which is uplifting in its way, right? I mean, it's cool. Somebody else. Did you, did you get a story? Did she give you a story, bro? Seriously? Do you got one? Bro, did you get a story? Wait, did you get one? Did, yeah, man, come on. I'm just going to call people out now. Okay, so my partner was telling me Here, you how... can turn around, actually, to the top, right there in that camera. All right, never mind, go yeah, ahead. Okay, where am I going? Mm, right there. Okay, that so dude, right there. My partner was telling me how she met a girl on her Thon org um, who was born in Berlin, but she's Muslim and grew up in Saudi Arabia, and she didn't expect uh, them to have so much in common. That's it. Dude, cool, man. See that? Isn't that awesome? That's just, that's what it is. All right, who else? Did, did you get a story from her? It was like the same one. The same one? Bro, did you get a story from her? Yeah. All right, man, you're telling it then. You can look right into that camera down there. So she went to the Netherlands. She went to the Netherlands. Oh, I know um, where this is going. All right. She was uh, sitting at a cafe uh, cafe outside, and there was an old lady at the corner of the street with a walker and everything. Wait, hold it up. And um, she, the waiter, ran over and walked the old lady across the street. So she was just telling how. You know, here that you don't see that a lot. So there's a lot nicer people there. So yeah, all right. Dude, it's because they're all stoned. But dude, very nice. Is it a coffee? Shop? Yeah, very cool. Somebody else who's got a story. Bro, did you get a story? Okay, I thought from her. Did you? Get, she has a good story. No, does, do you have a story, bro? From her? Do you have a story? Does she have a good story, bro? Who's got a story, man? Do you have one? What's that? Dude, thank you, man. Those are leaving me out here to dry. <laughs> All right, man. So, like, right outside of State College, 30 minutes from here, it's like all country land and whatnot. And the one time my car battery stopped working, and I was literally, like, in the boonies, like, it was just farmland, and there's this, there's this guy that pulls up in this tractor-trailer truck, and he actually helps. I'm expecting, like, oh, my God, this guy's probably, like, not going to help me or, like, just... White dude? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm assuming, like, I'm brown, and, like... <laughs> um, he actually, like, helped me out and placed the light bulb. He had an extra light bulb for the... For like the back thing, mm-hmm. the red thing on the car, and I would just never expect that. Like, like you know, like people always assume like, oh, this person's gonna treat me negatively, and I think that that is a very negative thing to place upon another human being. Like, how can you expect someone to treat you negatively without any like prior experience? Dude, awesome yeah. man, see that? Awesome. Yep. Cool. Somebody else? Who else? Yo, all right, man, I'm just going to call some people out. Dude, no, wait, you got, you went already. Do you have a story from that dude? Did you get a story? Did you get a story, bro? Seriously? She has nothing? You had nothing positive happen to you that you've seen? A white guy opened the door for you today? Dude. God. <laughs> Was it an Sam, old white guy that looks I like... I have a story. All right, go ahead, man. Thank you. So, uh, my partner Ashley went to a Penn State branch campus with a lot of Indian students, 
And they were so nice and friendly. And they invited her to go see an Indian movie that was like in the movie theater. And she got to just experience like a different culture and like a different style of like Bollywood. And it was, she said it was like really cool. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. I've had students that have had their lives transformed by simple little things like that and they just become really immersed in another culture. Did you get something from this dude, by the way? Did you get something from her? All right, man. Um, hi. So, I am from Bangladesh. Which way am I supposed to look? Okay. Um. <laughs> so, I'm from Bangladesh. Um, and if you know anything about the history, most people don't. Uh, we were under Pakistan. Um, so, we were the same country. We were East. They were West. Pakistan. Um, back before in independence of 1971, so we had a war then. And we won the war, we're now a sovereign nation, but since then there's been a lot of beef with Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. Um, every time there's a cricket match with Pakistan, everyone just goes wild. Um, and like, but back in sophomore year, I was at a party and I made a friend who was Pakistani. And he was originally from Pakistan as well, he's an international student. So we were talking about this war, and I was just saying how, you know, it's frustrating uh, because I, I'm, you know, I'm with a family who always has all these negative messages about Pakistanis, even though we don't interact with them on a daily basis because there aren't many Pakistanis in Bangladesh. So coming here, I was like talking to, about that with him, and he just, he just said he's sorry, you know? He apologized for his entire nation for something he's not personally responsible for. And I just thought that was wild. Like, you, don't, you didn't have to do that. And, you know, that made me really appreciate the humanity, the overriding humanity behind it all. That um, you can be from different nations, even though you're literally in the same Indian subcontinent and have that much hatred and division. But still, like, at the end of the day, it's... There's no difference, really, because there's hatred everywhere. Like, we went through this class, you know, we looked at the class about ISIS, we looked at the class about the Holocaust, and I don't see too much difference between them. It's still hatred and division, perceived division, when there might not really be any, and just tribalism, and that just, that's not fair. So, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Give us one. Do you have a story, bro? Do you have one from this guy? Who's got one? We'll do one more. One more. Dude, do you, do you have one? Bro, do you have one from her? Do you have one for story? Do you guys have a story? Got one over here. All right, man. Um... My partner, she, uh, she moved here from China and she lived with a American white family, right? White family for a year and they treated her like she was their child and they made her feel welcome. Cool. Yo, very cool. White people killing it. Uh. <laughs> Yo, very cool. Dude, awesome, man. All right. Um, Do you want your other mic back? No, you're still on mic duty, bro. Get your gummy bears and stay active. All gummy right. worms, actually. Wait, were they were gummy bears, right? Weren't they? Gummy worms. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Close. All right, listen, man. G Big give difference. me a, give me a question that somebody has. Who? Had, what question did your partner have of another race that you just want to ask? And then we're gonna get someone to answer it. So who had a question that they kick out? Dude, she had to have a cool question, bro. Who had a question? What did this guy have? Did he have a good question? Come on. Dude, you forget, dude. I love my question. Come on. Come on. Go okay. stand behind your question, bro. Is this that um I have a yeah. You're right there. Yeah. Um I tend to think that white people are Americans. 
in general like to think that the world they live is the only world that exists. So once in a while, like the mainstream media also shows them that there, there might be a case that they don't have an idea about. And they're like, oh, really, we're just shocked about it. So every once in a while, if you're really shocked about it, how can you just manage yourself to not like go and explore different cultures or something and still think that you're doing well like just by thinking this is the only world you have? You know? All right, cool, man. All right, so I need, this is a good question. So I need a white person. Dude, is this you? Oh, my, wait, you're going to answer the question? Oh, wait, no. All right, hang on, hang on. Now I need a white person to answer his question. And the question is how, you know, it's like sometimes all cultures get like really encased, but right now we're going to just talk about white Americans to get like really kind of bounded, having this kind of really not really understanding anything about the world and yet thinking that we do or is that Once it? Once in a while get to know that. Once in a while get to know that and get shocked about it and get intrigued about it and just forget about it next day. Like, yeah. All right, so who doesn't really know anything about the world, much about the world and why not? And this isn't a dig, like it's, you're not like a bad person if you don't know anything about the world. It's just this is the question, we're going to go with it, and we need somebody who's white to answer it. Yo, can you answer that? Do you know, do you know about the world? Oh, come on, dog. Wait, who wants to answer the question? I need a white person to answer the question. Bro, Mr. Baltimore Ravens guy. Can you answer it? Dude, I need a white person to answer. Can you? You're not white, though. You're mixed. You're, you're, wait. You're American. I know, hang on though, let me get like a white, white person. Dude, can you answer it? Bro, bro, she's gonna, she's gonna answer your question, this white woman right here, all right? What's your name too? Alicia. Alicia, that's a really white name also, so. <laughs> Thank you. And she's, yeah, she's wearing ch ch chucks on. All right, so go ahead, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I guess I would first answer this by saying that I used to... You can look that way. Hi. Uh, I would answer this by saying I used to be like that. I also kind of want to look at him, though, when I'm talking, too. Um, I used to be like that because um, I think American culture is very different from everywhere else, and a lot of people that come from their home countries and then come here, they've been immersed in their own culture their own culture and then American culture, so it's very different. But I went to Peru last summer, um, to Chilca, Peru, um, and it was my first time out of the country. Um, so I got a different perspective, and then when I came back, I was a lot more conscious of the things that I said and did, um, especially with like stuff like in the, in the mainstream media. Um, but a lot of us don't know any different than what we've grown up with. And we've kind of, I think we've all also kind of just been taught to not really expand our knowledge on other countries because it's, we're America, like we're America, we're a very powerful country, so we don't really need perspectives elsewhere because we have it all here. Yeah. Um, which is why I think going to like another country is so um, eye-opening for a lot of people. Dude, dude, beautiful answer, man. Are you from India, bro? So, in... And the vast majority of Indians also don't know anything about the world. You do because you're here, right? So you do. So it's pretty much the same as anywhere else, right? You white people, I, how'd I do? I just defended you all, right? Are we good there? You got that? All right, man. Somebody else, who's got a question? Bro, you had a, did you have a question? All right, man. I, somehow I think it's going to be a good one. Wait, is this her question? Wait, is this yours or her question? Uh, like, question. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yo, Look right there. Okay. <laughs> uh, white people, why are we so bad at dancing? <laughs> <laughs> dancing. <laughs> why are we so bad at dancing, dude? Maybe we're not really. Any white? Anybody want to answer that? Who wants to answer that? Maybe we're not. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just everybody else is really good. Uh, Wait, do you, you, have, you have a response to that? I do have a response. Usually white people have no ass, so we can't shake it. That's that. Dude, yeah, End of look. story. <laughs> Exhibit A, me. Exhibit A. Right here. <laughs> All right. Zero. I got Thank it. Thank you. I got it. All right. Okay, who's got another question, man? 
All right. Is this your partner's? Oh, we got one up here. All right, man. Okay. Um, this wasn't my question. It was my partner's question. But um, he just wanted to ask people, okay. like in state college, like white people, I guess, in state college, um, why they prefer smoking marijuana versus cigarettes. Why they what? Pre prefer smoking marijuana, like smoking pot versus cigarettes. Oh, I can answer that. <laughs> Dude. I mean, come on, man. Wait, have you ever tried it, bro? Wait, this is your question? All right, hang on. Okay. Does anyone... Okay, hang on. Do we have any stoners in here that want to answer that for him? Dude, all right. Hang on. <laughs> or Mr. Gummy Worms. All right. Wait, hang on. Let that, let, that, let that dude answer it right there. Right there with the hair. Yeah, you answer it, bro. Bro, go ahead, man. I would say that for people who haven't tried it, it's really hard to explain to them, like... You live on planet Earth. You live on planet Earth, but when you have marijuana, you'll get transported to some other planet. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying. And that's the closest thing you're going to get to heaven, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> dude. Uh, listen, bro. I'm going to disagree with you on that. Uh... On Tuesday, we'll talk about the closest you'll get to heaven, all right? All right. Oh. All right. All right, man. Who, who else got, has a question? Got did one you, up did here. Did you get your question answered? Are we good? All right, man. Who else has a question? Yeah, bro. Go ahead, bro. Go over there. You go first. Uh, my Egyptian partner, Will, wants to know why so many white girls wear crop tops and booty shorts when it's 30 degrees outside. Whoa. <laughs> Dude. Sorority girls don't get Will. cold. Yo, Will, have you ever, don't knock it till you've tried it, bro. <laughs> Anybody want to answer that question for him? In the back? Yo. Yo, bro. Come. Stoner in the back. Yo, you're going to answer the question? All right. And then you're on next, bro. Even if it's cold outside, girls look, like, amazing in it, so they want to be able to feel great. Like, I don't know. Go for it. Wait, hang on. All right. I guess we'll go with that. You got clapped. It. All right, bro. You can go. Did I just stand up? Yeah, stand up and look at that camera. So this is my own question. This is not my, pan by my partner's. What's his name? Uh, uh, Jonah. Uh, Jonah? Yeah. You look like a Jonah. All right. All right no, um, you do, really. No, this is my question, though. Okay. Yeah, so um, I lived in South uh, North Carolina for about um, three years, four years. But I wonder why do certain people still um, have Confederate flag on their trucks, in their property? Well, where, from what I learned, it's a symbol of, like, slavery and everything, you know? And people are okay with it because I see it every day. During mm. that four years, people are because okay, I, if I lived there, I wouldn't be okay with it. But people there are okay with it, and it's like normal. I don't understand. Yo, who's from the south that can answer that question, man? Dude, oh man, look at this guy, right? Um, I'm Yo, from. First off, hang on. How many pickup trucks did were there at your high, in your high school parking lot with Confederate flags on the back? So I'm from Florida, so we have a mix, oh, and dude. I'm right at the line between south and north. Yeah. So in North Florida, why, well, let me just preface this by saying, if Here, I you offend... Can just, you can stand up and we'll go with that camera right there. If I offend anyone that uh, still has a Confederate flag, oh, full offense, <laughs> you're an asshole. Second what? off, <laughs> let me say... No, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, no, hang on. You don't want to say that, because people watch the stream who have Confederate flags, so oh, it's all except good. Except for if you're on the stream. Yeah, all right. Except people on the stream. All right. Go ahead. So you're from Florida. Yeah. It's, Why do people have Confederate flags? Uh, I'd say that a lot of it's a lack of education. Uh -huh. You don't often see like nice houses that have rented or uh, Confederate flags. A lot of it is white people that try to blame their difficulties on other people rather than themselves. So like it's it's not black people's fault that you smoke crack and are broke now. Like I don't know why you have a Confederate flag. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm not you got a fan. it, bro? There's your answer right there. Smoke, because people smoke too much crack. <laughs> right. 
That's exactly what I was thinking was the reason, too, by the way. All right, man. Oh, hang on. got one down here. All right, go ahead. Um, okay, okay. I want to know what the beef is between dark skins and light skins or mixed people, because there's low-key beef and I just... Okay, there's high-key beef. Beef between dark, like black people who are light skin and dark skin, or brown people, light, yeah. light skin and dark. Yeah. Oh, though. You know what? Uh, can someone answer that question? Dude, will someone answer that question real fast? What's the, what's the core of the beef? Yo, man, here. Bro, I got to borrow the mic real fast. I'll bring it back. Bro, you got it? All right, mom. Jack Daniels is going to respond here. All right, I would say that... By the way, hang on, can I just say something? Yes. That's like really close to a Confederate flag. What? The Jack Daniels cap. No. Go ahead. I would say that because black men typically prefer like light skins because of their hair and just the color of their skin, and they just prefer them more often, I would say. You think so? Yes. And so there, so for women anyway, there's sort of a beef about that. They feel that kind of yeah, way. Yeah, because, I don't know, I know a lot of females like fight over guys, and that's one of the reasons because... Dude, see. anyone want to add? Okay, all right, I got you. Anyone want to add anything to that? Oop, got one. Wait, I got to let a guy respond. You're going to respond to that? Yeah. All right, dude. Um... I would say that I'm gonna see my black guy. I like everything under the sun, so um, <laughs> we don't, there's no preference for black, light skin. Wait, hang on. Are. Does that include other black guys? Yeah, we don't okay. care. We just if, if, you, if you look good, you look good. That's I mean, that's the end of the day. If you look good, you look good. So All I right. think the whole light skin versus dark skin thing for men was when we were younger, like in elementary school, where we wanted light skin girls with light eyes, but. I mean, you could be darker, you could be lighter, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice, whatever. So. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, I like that. Wait, quick, quick hey, response, Sam. and then we gotta Sam. get to this guy. Do you have a quick response to it? All right. Yo, yeah, I got a question fast, then. Can I just sit? Hang on. Sure. Yeah, you can sit. So I haven't experienced this like prejudice, but you my haven't. mom has, because she's mm -hmm. very light-skinned. And I think there's just a general prejudice and a general privilege that people of lighter skin have to people of darker skin. Mm. I think it dates all the way back to like slavery where people of lighter skin were working in the houses and people of darker skin were working in the fields. Mm -hmm. And like, there's just a general privilege that lighter skin people have over darker skin people. That is just held up through the years. It's obviously not as strong as like white people versus people of color, but like we notice it within smaller communities. Yeah, I got you. Okay, all right, bro. Thanks, man. You're on, man. Hi, um, Sam. He asked me like, what? Oh, oh, dude, you're next. You'll be the last question, Mudar. All right. um, he asked me, like, what do people in your country think about the U.S.? What's that? Say it again. What do people in your country think about the U.S., like your parents and old people? And so, wait. <laughs> yeah. he, so he asked you that question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so man. Discussions for, like, oh, yeah. All right, cool. So what do people, what do people in your country uh, think about? Think where are you from, bro? From Saudi. From Saudi, where? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Yeah, what are Saudis thinking about um, the Actually, US? they value the education here in the U.S. That's why you're here. Yeah, I'm studying here. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. All right, that's cool. I like that. All right, Mudar. So, M M go ahead. Stand up, bro. Okay. By the way, who had a kick-ass time at the Metallica concert a couple weeks ago because one of my former... <laughs> dude, because one of my former TAs is the, the uh, events manager for Metallica and got him some rockin' seats. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Okay, so I have the, so it's my question and I want to know why do people like to drink even though, I mean, they don't taste good, they don't smell good, and it gets them out of their mind and do bad things. <laughs> Dude. All right. Wait. Okay, can someone answer that question real fast? And why do you like to drink so much, man? Can someone just respond to that real fast? It could be... How about the two frat guys here? Are you... Are you wait, are you guys in a frat? You're not, right? Are you? No, you two guys. No, wait, was it you guys? No, it was you guys. Are you guys in a frat? 
Dude. I got Are you gay yet? You're not gay yet, right? Because you looked into each other's eyes. You're good? Well, what was the question I didn't hear? The, dude, you didn't even hear it. The question from me there is, why do you MFers like to drink so much? Um, it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> dude, hang on. Hang on. That, no, I'm not going to let that. Th- listen, bro, here's the deal. This, your answer is going to live on the internet forever. All right? That response right there, if that was a future boss of yours, you would be fired before you even started. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it's f- no, no, give a thoughtful answer. Why do you think y'all like to drink so much? I honestly don't know. I really don't. You just do? Just do, yeah. Bro, do you have an answer? I'd say that uh, after an accounting and marketing exam, there's probably nothing better than just you know, I'm hitting the bottle. Dude, <laughs> actually, no, 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 there is. That guy, I, I've got to disagree with you. Our man over there would say it would be like spleef up, but, you know, whatever. All right. Okay, y'all, Tuesday, needy penis. Don't miss it. Yeah.